Welcome to Syncardia, where we manufacture the world's only commercially approved artificial heart. Syncardia is located in Tucson, Arizona, and is comprised of six different buildings totaling 34,000 square feet. Roughly half of that is dedicated to operations and manufacturing. We'll start the tour off in Spuds, where we manufacture the building block of the artificial heart. Then we will go to CES, where we manufacture the heart itself, and then we will end in CASA, where we manufacture and service the drivers that pump the heart. Welcome to the Spuds Lab where we manufacture Spuds. Spuds stands for Segmented Polyurethane Solution and is the building block for all of our artificial parts. The Spuds process is a temperature controlled polymerization process with a unique blend of raw materials, initiators, extenders, and terminators to have a final outcome of a material that meets our mechanical and chemical properties to be used inside of the body. In addition to manufacturing, we also do the final acceptance testing here at Syncardio. At Syncardia, we have a tensile tester to make sure that the spuds meets the mechanical properties we need. We also have an FTIR and GPC to make sure that it meets the chemical properties needed as well. Spuds has about 800 years worth of patient life on it, making it one of the most biocompatible materials out there in the market. This is our reactor for spuds, which we utilize to blend all the raw materials to manufacture spuds. Think of the reactor as a big kitchen aid. Is if you are making cookies and you're mixing all your materials together, this is exactly what the reactor does for us. At the end of the process, we repackage all the spuds into smaller bottles, which we store in the CES for them to use for manufacturing the heart. Here we are in the CES and I'll go over the manufacturing process for the artificial art. So initially, we have to make the ventricle housing for the artificial art. We do that by utilizing spuds, as you can see, which has a high viscosity, similar to honey. And we pour the spuds on top of the molds, utilizing open cast molding, and then we cure it. So one pour, we'll put it into the oven, we'll cure it, that's one layer. And we'll do this about 18 different times until we get a thickness that meets our specification. As you can see, we've got an embedded mesh in between the layers. So between layers nine and 10, we'll put a mesh that acts and to give it mechanical strength and to give it the heart a little more robustness during the pumping process. Next part of the process, we're gonna add a blood diaphragm. And the blood diaphragm is the one that interacts with the blood and pushes it and also receives the blood in through the heart. The way that we manufacture this is that we utilize a mold where we put the housing on top of it and we'll pour the spuds inside of the mold 
and then we'll let it cure upside down. As you can imagine, the shape is concave. So you have a kind of a rounded edge where the spuds will sit and then it will cure to the outside wall or the inside wall of the heart. Next step, we've got the blood diaphragm assembly. We don't just have one layer for the diaphragm. We've got uh, four complete layers. The diaphragm assembly has got three layers itself with graphite in between them to act as a lubricating layer. Or a layer. The technicians will take the ventricle with the blood diaphragm layer. They will insert the diaphragm assembly. They'll utilize spuds to glue it to the inside so you've got four complete layers. Next part of the process, you'll have the base cannula assembly. And the base cannula assembly it seats to the bottom of the ventricle housing to have a complete airtight seal, allowing the air to pressurize and push the diaphragm assembly so that you can pump blood out. And also you have a vacuum cycle where you can pull blood inside to the heart so you can fill and you can pump. Uh, next part of the process is actually a completed TH assembly where you've got two different ventricles. To fully complete it, you do have uh, heart valves that you will seat inside of the device itself. The heart valves act as a stop gate to allow blood not to come in at a certain period and then allow blood to come in and fill the heart. The last part of the process that I want to show is, is the interaction with how the heart works. So as I talked about, you have a pressurization cycle and then you've got a vacuum cycle. Pressurization cycle, you will pump air into the cannula until it pressurizes until it can overcome the systemic pressure. At that point, you will get movement of the diaphragm and an opening of the outflow valve. Blood will expel outside of the heart. Once the valve or the diaphragm is fully distended, the driver will pull a vacuum cycle. So it'll depressurize the cannula allowing the diaphragm to retrace back to its original position until the system pressure on the inlet side overcomes the valve and allows blood to come in and fill the heart. Repeat the cycle again with pumping. And this occurs on average about two times per second for 120 beats per minute. And that is the manufacturing of the artificial heart. Now we are in the failure investigation cell within the CASA building where we receive drivers that have potentially failed in the field as well as drivers that have failed in manufacturing where we investigate, trying to find the root cause and determine a solution to move forward. As being a class three medical device under the FDA, we have the responsibility to report on any failures that we see in the field and any solutions that we need to move forward to make sure that the product is safe Here we are in the Companion 2 cell in the CASA building. CASA stands for Console Assembly and Service Area, and it's where we service all incoming drivers and manufacture new drivers. As the driver is out in the field and it's reached its certain service cycle, it'll come to Syncardia to be serviced just as you would with your car at a 15,000 mile service cycle, 30,000 service cycle, 
we also have service cycles here for our drivers. The Companion 2 has a 90 day service cycle. After 90 days of use, it'll come back to be serviced and have components replaced. It's also got a two year service cycle where it, it is calendar days, whether it's been used or not, if it sits on the shelf, it comes back to have components replaced in the driver to ensure that it's safe for patient use. The Companion 2 replaced the console CSS Big Blue device, which used to be 400 pounds and looked like a washing machine, now down to a small form factor, which is more portable. The Companion 2 is the hospital driver, which allows the surgeons and the clinicians to have more control and also have more visuals and diagnostics to see how the patient's doing. If the patient is not clinically stable, they will not be discharged to freedom and they will remain on the C2 device. Here we are in the Freedom Cell in the CASA building. The Freedom is the portable driver that the patients are discharged with once they leave the hospital. Once a patient is clinically stable, they will be discharged and they can utilize the Freedom driver either in a backpack, a shoulder bag, or a handbag that they utilize to carry with them. Each patient is sent home with two drivers, one being their primary and one being their backup. If anything were to happen to their primary, patient would switch to their secondary or their caregiver would switch to their uh, to their secondary they would then go to the hospital to receive a replacement backup so they always have two on hand here we are in the accessory cell where we service carts caddies and retest batteries before they go out to the both the cart and the caddy allow the C2 to be mobile within the hospital. The cart is utilized in the surgical suite to allow for movement of the C2 within that environment. And the caddy is used if the patient needs to be moved for testing, for labs, throughout the hospital so that the C2 is mobile throughout that process. Here we are in the Syncardio showroom, which is a bonus for the virtual tour. The main thing I wanted to point out was the difference between the Big Blue, which was our historical driver, versus the C2, which is our current existing hospital driver. For the Big Blue, as you can see, it's a larger device, but it was utilized during our first implant in 1985. Uh, it was all analog control, as you can see, and also a larger device uh, about the size of a washing machine. For the C2, it is a smaller device, but also gives you digital readouts and allows you to have a little bit more flexibility with the control. Here we are at the end of our tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. I want to thank you all for watching and good luck in the Heart Hackathon.